All right, so now that y'all are all in my face, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my makeup routine. And this is just gonna be a very simple makeup routine. This is just something that I, I normally wear, you know, on a night out when I don't wanna get too dolled up or when I'm not trying to get too fancy with it. So I'm going to be applying the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Foundation Primer. That's a mouthful. So the reason why I use this primer, of course, is because it is pore minimizing and my pores are huge. And it does give me a smooth finish so it makes it easier for me to apply my makeup while that primer is setting in I'm gonna go ahead and use it cosmetics bye bye under eye corrector in the shade medium as a primer for my lids and the reason why I do this is just so that my eyeshadow that I apply is going to last longer now I'm gonna go in with my exuvian skin caring foundation in the shade terracotta sand it has SPF 15 in it and I've mentioned this several times in my videos that this is easily become my newest favorite foundation and the reason why is because it really does go on so smoothly and because of the fact that it's a skin caring foundation it's very gentle on your skin it's kind of like skin repairing almost and I'm going to use my Real Techniques sponge which is like a beauty blender dupe and another thing I really like about this Exuviant foundation is that it's buildable so it's very lightweight for someone who needs to wear makeup every day and I know nobody really needs to wear makeup every day but if you're like me I have a lot of scarring because of the acne problems that I had in the past I need something that's going to cover the scars because I'm, I'm kind of still really self-conscious about these scars. So I'm just going to use like one coat or like one, I guess, layer of the exuviant. And like I said, because it is buildable, if you want like a heavier foundation, one that is completely full coverage, because this isn't necessarily full coverage foundation, if you want something that is full coverage, you can continue to apply more layers of your Exuviance foundation until you are satisfied with the look but because of the fact that I'm going to go over my blemishes or my acne scars with concealer then I don't really need to continue to apply a second coat of the Exuviance foundation okay I'm done I just keep I like the sponge this is I think you guys remember this from my haul video but this is like one of my newest favorites now I have been struggling with puffy eyes or baggy eyes for the majority of my life so I went out to Ulta and I bought this bye bye under eye concealer the one that I had applied on my lips I'm not lips on my lids as a primer it isn't a primer it's actually just a concealer but it's supposed to help bring down those bags a little bit I'm just kind of kind of let it sit before fully blending that in and I'm going to use a little bit on the area that I have some scarring from my acne. Now that I put it on my scars, I'm just going to continue to blend that out with my finger, patting it out, and then just kind of bringing it out like this. So one of the things that I'm going to do is something that I actually just started doing and it's really been helping because I feel like no matter what concealer I use under my eyes, it still kind of creases a little bit. And I think it's just because of the way my eyes are shaped underneath here in comparison to where my bags fall. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the Ben Nye Banana Powder, which is something that I said before that I didn't know how to use and now I know how to use it now. I don't use a lot, just a little bit. I just pat it on a like a tapered brush and I'm going to set my concealer with it. And because of the fact that the Ben Nye Banana Powder kind of works as a highlight also, I just kind of feel like it, it just kind of does double duty for me. And I'm just going to pat it down just to kind of set the concealer. What I'm going to do is start off with my eyes. I'm not going to be dramatic. I'm not going to be all fancy with it. I'm just going to do something really subtle, but still just kind of enhancing my eye features. I'm going to take my Lorac Pro Palette and I'm going to take the shade Taupe, which is that one. And I'm just going to apply it to the crease of my eye. Oh, y'all are just way back there. So I guess I'm going to take the, the Taupe I'm just going to apply it to the crease of my eye, like this, very gently, and I like taupe because it's a nice 
very very light and subtle brown so the next thing that I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the espresso color which of course lately has been my favorite color and just lightly dust that on the corner just on the corner crease and then once I kinda of do that on the corner crease I just kinda of like use my brush in a circular motion and bring it into the lid like that maybe I should have shown you guys what espresso is espresso is a darker chocolate color that's espresso and this is mauve so I'm gonna take mauve and then I'm gonna pat it onto the lid and I've been using the same brush you guys I don't know if y'all notice but as I mentioned in a previous video as well I'm not too crazy on different kinds of brushes. I'm gonna go back with the taupe which is again this lighter brown and I'm gonna go back in into the crease like that. Next I'm gonna apply a liner and the liner that I'm gonna be using is the NYX black and I'm going to apply that the bottom waterline pretty lightly all right so I have the bottom waterline and I'm also gonna do the inner line I mean not the inner line the upper lid like that So it doesn't matter if, if it's not perfect or if it's not exactly on the waterline because I'm going to smudge that out. So again, and another thing is I don't pull my lid down because that's just going to make my bags even worse. What One thing that I do is I press. So you press, when you press you see how the, the waterline just kind of pokes out like that. So you press instead of pull, that's just going to help so that you're bags don't get heavier. So now that that's done, I'm going to take a flat brush, lightly pat it in that same espresso or dark brown that I used, and I'm going to smudge it out. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the waterline, but as close as possible. And what that's going to do is, of course, it's going to help give that smudgy look it's also going to help, well for me, it, it has helped set the eyeliner, and although the eyeliner is waterproof, I don't buy it. This is something that's been very new to me, so don't judge me, okay? But I have been filling in my eyebrows because I do notice in a lot of pictures that I've been taking lately that the eyebrows from, I guess, the center, they have been not thinning out, but, I mean, it's it's not like it's something that's been new. This is just something that I've just started noticing. I guess because everyone and their mama is filling in their eyebrows. And then I'm taking pictures of people who have had their, who have had their eyebrows filled in. And I'm just like, where did my eyebrows go? So I've slowly started to fill in my eyebrows or start to fill in my eyebrows. But I've done so in a way where I feel comfortable with how they look. I have been taking just an angled brush. I tap it into the taupe color. And I'm still using the Lorac Pro, color, Pro Palette, so I'm taking it and I'm just kind of patting it into the light brown color. And I'm just going to kind of brush along my eyebrows. If I feel like that's not enough, then I'll dip it into the espresso, which is the darker color. Which is These are the same colors that I used on my eyes. So I'll take it into the espresso and then I'll begin to gently fill in the inner parts of my eyebrows like that. I'm just doing it in sweeping motions. Just kind of filling in those gaps in my eyebrows with the shadow. Now, I have not used these brow pencils or brow gels I haven't really found a need to go out and buy it yet because I've been doing okay, I guess, with my eyebrows. But if some of y'all out there who are makeup experts can recommend or give me a link to a tutorial where you think it will be extremely easy for me to understand, then please send that over 
but as of right now this is what I've been using so the next thing I'm going to do is the rest of my face. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with the Bare Minerals All Over Face Color, and it comes in the shade Warmth. Now, I'm going to warn you about this if you happen to have this. I mean, I, I, I'm not telling you to go out and buy this, but if you're looking for a an all-over bronzer, an all-over kind of like face color, I mean, that's what it's called, then I do recommend this, but a little goes a long way. Now, what I do is I open it a little bit to where, you know, the powder is able to come out but I think one day I opened it and I left it open and nothing but powder came out. So anyway, and then I shake it up, right? And then I take what's left of the cap and I pat it down. And then I use whatever is left on the cap, swirl it around. And I am just using the Bare Minerals blush brush. So I'm taking this and I just apply it onto my cheekbones, the hollows of my cheekbones, my temples, and then the tops of my head like that. I even do a little bit under my lip and then on the side of my nose. It's not going to give you a huge difference. I'm not contouring or anything. I'm just adding a little bit of color to my flat colored face just to kind of look normal. <laughs> now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and apply the foundation. And I don't need a lot of foundation. I'm just kind of applying this to kind of set everything together. But this is the Bare Minerals again. But this is the matte foundation in the shade Golden Tan or W30. And this does also have SPF 15. So this is one of the reasons why I, I love this foundation. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit to the cap take my brush and I'm gonna swirl it like this and then what I do is I just kinda pat first where I feel I'll need it and that way I don't have to reapply more foundation so now I'm just gonna swirl it all around my face and then I can't forget the neck just a little bit on the neck to keep it an even color and now just a touch of blush so I have been loving the MAC shade peaches this is just a very light kind of peachy a little bit more on the orangey side um, blush I've, I've never really been a fan of like rosy cheeks so not like rosy as in like you know I just like really light colors I don't really like them to be too red but just like lightly dusting this on my cheekbones, kind of bringing it up a little bit. And that's it. Still haven't learned how to put falsies on, and I don't even think that falsies are necessary for an event like a girl's night out or just like a dinner in a movie for me. So I'm just gonna apply my mascara, and of course, I've mentioned this before, my favorite mascara is the Full and Soft Maybelline mascara. I just apply maybe two or three coats of this and it gives me volume, it lengthens my lashes, and I get no clumps. And I feel like the final coat just helps lengthen. Because you're just adding to the fibers that have already been applied to your lashes. The majority of my face is done, so I'm going to go ahead and set it with the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. This is the long-lasting, oil-free, paraben-free, temperature control technology. So I mentioned in a previous video that I was looking for a makeup setting spray that was good. And I was, uh, or this was highly recommended by some friends, some subscribers. So I have been using it and I have been loving it. And I just use this after putting my makeup on. And I just kind of fan it out. I'm going to be using a gloss today. I'm not going to be using any lipstick or anything like that. Or any liner. This is just the MAC Glam or Viva Glam V A61. And my makeup is done. It's not dramatic, it's not super fly, you know, all this color and all this drama on my face. It's just very subtle, very, you know, enhancing my natural features kind of thing. So I have that done and I'm still waiting for my hair to dry. I want to say it's maybe about 80% dry. 
I don't even want to dare put my fingers in my hair to see how dry it is. So I'm just going to let that dry and I'm going to come back and we're going to finish with my hair. You can use a pick. I'm always, always, always talking about a pick. So what I do is I just kind of rake at the root and lift. Rake at the root and lift. Rake at the root and lift. 